So the nine million sets of remains would be the full bodies of the Christians and then the cremated remains of the non-Christians. I know now most Christians can be cremated. Uh, I know Catholics can now be cremated, but uh, I don't know if that's... Now, um, at one time, can you imagine like a, an unorganized maze, like... Let's say if you had a family member you wanted to bury, you might dig a trough. It looked like a trough to me when I was there. And you might put one or two or three of your family members. Somebody else would come along and dig another one in no particular order. If you had a little money, you would put a marble slab over the person. If it didn't, oh well, you know, kind of terrible place, you know. So, but all of the remains have been removed from the catacombs. now. Nine, nine, 900 miles where I was, 900 miles. Now, in Rome, 900 miles. Down here, nine seconds, okay? <laughs> so it's not going to be long, but one thing I wanted to do, I'm going to go first, and I'll walk really quickly because some people don't like this part of the tour, but it's not bad. We're only like in here about nine seconds, but there is an altar that's going to be on your left. Remember we have some things here that are replicas and some things that are the real thing, like the stone in Jesus' tomb is the real thing. Well, we have the actual remains of two martyrs. One was a soldier that was killed in the year 179. Miraculously, his bones never deteriorated. Wow. So his remains are here. He's buried here. Technically, he's buried because we're underground. <laughs> so when you go into an open chapel, to your left, you'll see a wax image of a soldier, and then on that altar are his remains. I have difficulty sometimes convincing visitors that that is all bone. People will say, oh, this looks like cotton, or this is, it's all bone. It just never deteriorated from the year 179. graffiti on the walls and uh, now when I was there I did not see any red and green color I didn't see any color what I saw these symbols were where I was but they were etched into the stone and the Christians knew they had the fish they had the alpha the omega the, the Christians knew that the peacocks meant each other up in the arena bring us up to the arena and they would release wild animals a very cruel form of execution um, just I can't think of any well being burned at the stake, crucified probably, right, rank right up there. But um, now the friars have replicated, this is the exact, imagine 200 of us squeezed down here. The only thing that's different is the friars did not put the cages for the animals down here. That was getting a little bit too much. But if you go to Rome, you'll, you'll see the cages where the animals were, if you've ever been there. It's just a eerie, eerie place. And these would be the dimensions. He was a little boy, found in the catacombs, buried between two adults. And if you ever get to the catacombs, let's say if you're buried here, your name would be etched on the wall here. So the two adults had their names, their names have escaped me at the moment, but their names were etched on the wall. The little boy was not. But our technology verified that the two adults that he was lying between uh, were in fact his parents. Killed um, 1,800 years ago, now when we go by, this is not a replica, these are his actual remains. Now, the friars did not want a skeleton laying out in a glass coffin for children and people to see. So the nuns put a mask on his face and a robe, but you can see his hands were clasped like this and then wrapped in gold mesh according to Jewish custom. So you can see his hands, his feet, he still has the original sandals on his feet that he was buried in, they're petrified but you can really see almost the tibia, and you can see the, well anyway, you'll see. But this is the actual uh, remains. Um, the archeologists say that he was no more than eight years old. That's as close as they can come. Looks a whole lot younger than that to me. So Coptics and Ethiopians are two different groups that all claim that they found the cave in which Jesus was born. 
And so the problem is solved because not one Christian church has the key. For 800 years, a Muslim family has had the key. And the head of that family gets up, unlocks the church, and if he dies, then the key gets passed on since um, uh, 1217, when Francis made friends with the Shah. He thought he was going to convert the Shah. We know in, in hindsight that wasn't going to happen. But the Shah gave, the last thing I'm going to tell you, I promise, the Shah gave St. Francis a letter of safe passage throughout all of the Palestinian territory. That letter is still in existence. And so the friar, the Shah died 800 years ago. They don't have to honor that. But he, they have uh, that safe passage. I don't know how safe it is now, but, um, but anyway, I promise not to tell you anything else, okay? Come back and I'll tell you some more, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs>